Hey guys, Frog HD here, and um, today we're reading another amazing fan fiction. So, if you um know Shy Gal, that is that fantastic creature created by none other than Troglodyte himself. But um, it's uh, it's a fan fiction again. Yeah, I know, it's so creative. But this time I have more gameplay footage that isn't Little Big Plant 3 because you know that's the only game I had that was you know easy to play. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna hop into this garbage. So today's wonderful fan fiction is called Shy Guys and Shy Gals Mask Love and I'm gonna read this. Shy guys are pretty timid people. They're small, simple, quiet, and well, shy. They always wear a mask hiding their face. However, not much is heard about shy guys after they are placed with new race. Shy gals! Yeah, cause that definitely happened. After that, Shy Guys were no longer needed in Koopa Queen's army, because apparently Bowser died and, and, and now it's Koopa Queen. It's Bowser, everyone's favorite. Unlike Shy Guys, Shy Guys are much taller, less timid, and shy, and perform actions way better than Shy Guys because they're not one foot tall. Where are Shy Guys to this day? No one really knows. After no longer being needed in the military, they they'll simply want to living normal lives. I mean, I could imagine that some shy guys live normal lives somewhere in the military, but you, you know, anyway. Shy gals and the bodies were known too much more attractive than that of a shy guy. Having thicker thighs, nice breasts, curvy waists. They were the ideal woman. Okay. Of course, with there, with there being different races of shy guys, Thing applied to shy gals. Yeah, having different hair colors and stuff. That's definitely different, but due to shy guys being scarce nowadays, shy gals were forced to seek other men. Okay. Of course, if a shy guy were to find a shy guy, they would presumably make them their love through different acts to make them gain their love. Okay. Each race often has different methods in trying to get their lover, but all shy gals share the same method when it comes to shy guys. That method being DOMINATING THEM! You see, shy guys are submissive when it comes to it, and will easily do- and will easily whatever- wait, it says what- and will easily whatever their love asks with slight hesitation. Okay, you're gonna ask them to jump off a cliff and they'll do it. Even in outrageous tasks, those shy guys will do the task. Oh, well, I was right. In a way, shy guys complete the relationship with shy guys. Uh, wait, shy gals really? Yeah, they, they do. They totally do. Of course they do. Them being submissive ones and shy gals being dominant. Okay. There are no cases of a uh, shy guy not accepting the love of shy gals. So that's I, I really doubt that, but. Even so, the shy gal would simply force the shy guy into a relationship. Huh, huh, that's not good at all. That's actually really bad to do that, but in most cases, that's what happens in a scenario. Shy guys are very shy and timid, as I stated earlier, because English is hard language for me. And shy gals are often take advantage to this, using their submissiveness to force into loving them and pretty much, well, submitting to them. Some shy gals <laughs> with fetishes <laughs> often use shy gals to take advantage of their fetishes. So they use their fetishes on each other. Okay, that makes sense. On rare occasions, you can sh you can shy gals holding a shy guy on a leash. He's a dog now. Now, after explaining the story of shy gals and shy guys, and their relationships. Let's take a look at some action. Okay. <laughs> yeah, some great action here. Today we have our shy guy, Red. Red is typical, quiet, and timid shy guy. Normally staying indoors and keeping to himself. On this day, there was a storm raiding outside. Because Fortnite exists. Which luckily for Red gave him a reason to snuggle up indoors. He was sitting down on his couch watching TV with blankets covering himself for hearing a knock on his door. Red never really had visitors as he didn't really didn't have it 
anyone to come over due to his, well, shyness. Huh? Someone's door? I don't remember ordering a package. And in this storm, red. Got up, walked to, to the door before opening it, revealing the visitor. The person was a common shy gal with a blue tunic and pink curly hair. Die right now. Her height was the average shy gal height, which is not one foot like a shy guy, but what, which meant she was four times taller than him. Rain poured down behind her, and as she looked down, who, for who could have opened the door? Then she stared down at the shy guy with a hesitant glare. She was drenched with rain and her curls dripping water. Okay. I'm sorry to bother you, but I need shelter until the storm goes away. Could you help me, please? Of course, come right in. Because I like letting strangers in my house. He opened the door. As the shy gal walked in, Red shut the door behind him before helping his guests. Here, let me get a towel, replied Red before going to into his bathroom to help her. He soon returned with the towel, handing it to her around her to dry herself off. The shy gal glared around the room, admiring Red's decor. You got a nice place, remarked shy gal. Oh, um, thanks, said Red. Do you, do you need some spare clothes? Mine are too small, but I can look around. Okay. Yeah, and a shower would be nice. Oh, just use my bathroom. Red showed her to her bathroom. As they walked down, he noticed her how her tunic was wet tunic. Wait, her wet tunic stuck up to her breasts. I'm done, I'm done. Showing some revealing details, Red looked away embarrassed. Here it is. I'll get cl some clothes for you. He ran off to go find some clothes. He could hear the water running in the bathroom while he looked around for suitable clothes for her to wear. He goes into his closet looking around for anything that might be suitable. After scampering around a bit, he manages to find some long robes for her to wear. I don't know why he has long robes if he's like a foot tall, but he then runs to the bathroom to hand her the clothes. He knocks on the bathroom door. I found some clothes for you, he says at the door. No response. He calls for her again. With no response, after building up his courage, he enters the bathroom. The sight he sees amazes him. Her body is nude. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I hate this fan fiction! I can't believe this! With water droplets covering her as her breasts what? hang freely, I want to kill myself. And her butt freely on display, she stares at the mirror before turning to see Red with his mask showing two little red spots for his cheeks. Well then. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, S so sorry, he says before dropping the clothes off and slamming the door running into his bedroom. He covered himself with his blankets as he stampered while thinking about what he had and much, and, and much of an idiot he was. He sat there for a while on his bed for a knock came on his door. Come in, sighed Red as the shy gal came in with her new clothes. Oh, I want to just thank you for your new clothes and such. Oh no, it's fine. Listen, about earlier, he looks down as he begins to blush again. Don't worry, it's fine. I know you didn't mean to. The shy gal crawls into bed with him. She places herself next to him. Ne wait, next to while putting a hand on his shoulder. You know, I never got your name, says Shy Gal. Oh, um, it's Red. The Shy Gal chuckled. That's funny, my name is Blue. Red began to laugh as well. Oh, it's like TF2, or Pokemon. <laughs> Red and Blue, it has a nice ring to it. They lay in bed, chuckling with each other. Blue begins to slowly shift herself close to him. They talked for a while, while before, Blue, while before Blue began to shift closer to him. I never thanked you for helping me as she got closer to him. She embraced him with a big hug as she wrapped her arms around him. Red found his head wedged between her breasts and 
You can't stamp her. I don't, I don't, I don't like this story. Uh, oh, it's no problem. Just trying to help. His words are cut short as he as he climbed on his body. Would we'll, we'll probably kill him because he's like one foot tall and he's really short. So and she's tall, but putting her hands on his arms and knees on his legs, pinning him down. I mean, he has really short legs. Let me thank you. She then sits on his lower body as she pulls his head closer. Red cannot move due to her weight and watches as she brings her face closer to his. As her masks are inches away from each other, we feel Red's frantic breathing on her as she pulls him into a long, deep kiss. Red tries to escape her loving grasp, yet with no avail, she dominates his tongue, pressing against it while using it in her will. After finally letting go, the trail of saliva leaving their lips and lips as she stares at his chest and goodness. That's just one part of your gift. She puts a hand on his chest and begins to stroke him. He, ca car wait. he caresses his body with her hand as as she runs her fingers along his stomach. This pleases him, alright, as he begins to get hard. No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. That fiction week's over. I hate this boy. Die. You bastard! Blue notices the excitement from Red and begins to tease him. Do you like being pet like a dog? Do you want me to put you on a leash? Okay. And then tell you to roll over? I bet you'd like that. Her tone turned seductive. No, it's just, um, nothing. She chuckled at his statement. Alright then. I'll show you, you, I'll show you much of a pervert you really are. And she begins to place her other hand on his crotch, running her fingers along. Along, along bulge. Okay. Yeah, I genuinely just despise this book and everything it stands for. Feeling him as he gets harder and harder. Each them, that each them excites him more and more. Okay, and logic makes sense. The logic of um, you know, this paragraph writing, getting excited down there. No, no, it's okay. no. She continues moving, move. She continues move as faster pace, rubbing her hand against his hard cock. I hate this book. See, I'm teasing. And you're already rock hard. Red looks away. She blushes even more. Well, I've never really done it. Blue grins at hearing this statement. She loved seeing him like he looked like an embarrassed little boy. Okay. Which only fueled her lust. Don't be embarrassed. I'll let you feel good. But first, you have to make me feel good. Then. She proceeds to take her pants, <sighs> take of her pants before moving her panties. Red watches as her panties slip down her thick thigh. Um, um, <laughs> slip down her thick thighs. I'm gonna kill myself so badly after this book. What are you doing? Asks Red before she gets up and plants herself on his face, using his face as a seat. Yeah, you're totally not gonna like murder him or anything, huh? Muffles red as blue lowers herself onto him. Relax. All you have to do is use your tongue. Not to you do is use a gun and kill myself. She continues to sit on his face, crushing him, murdering him. Actually, waiting for him to get the message, Red tries to push her off while saying some muffled words. She of course ignores him as she shakes her lower body on his face. After a while, he gives it. And and he begins to lick her in in her most parts, rubbing his tongue against her clit, making him actually kill the creator of this book. Ah, uh, yeah, just like that. He continues to lick her womanhood, moving his tongue in her as she moans. He can hear her taste <laughs> her taste juices. <laughs> what does that even mean? As 
dug his tongue deeper and deeper until he, she climaxed on him. I don't even know what that means, mate. She removes herself from his face and lays next to him. Good boy. She pets Red's head as he ga grasps, gasps for air. He deserves a reward for that. <laughs> then she begins to remove his pants, even though he doesn't wear pants. Shy guys don't wear pants, mate. They wear, like, robes or whatever it is. As his rock hard di d dildo escapes the clutches of his underwear. Aw, uh, what a cute. <laughs> Oh! Right, but he needs to blush hearing the statement. He looks away in dismay. Um, yeah, thanks. Blue giggles at his stammering. Stammering. You want me to make you feel good? She rubs her foot against his cock as he twitches in precipitation, wedging it, wedging her toes. Wait, wedging it between her toes. What the f she begins to jerk him off, moving her toes up and down as his penis twitches in pleasure. Red is, continue, Red is continues to gain an, a sensual feeling as waves of pleasure hit him. Aren't you a bit perverted getting off at my feet? No, I'm not a pervert. Luke continues to jiggle at, his, at these remarks. Alright then, let's see about this. She then begins to unbutton her tunic as her threats were soon exposed. She was a nice C cup because that apparently mattered, but the pink while covering them because that mattered too. Do you want to feel them? I can let you. Just tell me per you're a pervert. Red begins to sweat a bit. Um, uh, I um. Oh, jeez. Blue then pout pounces on Red, showing her breast in his face. She stares at him with a sinful smile. Okay, right. Even though you're wearing a mask, but Red tries to escape as her soft breath keeps him trapped. He then stops for air. Blue rubs her breasts on his face. You're gonna end up murdering him, by the way. Come on, say it. I know you want to. Say it. And I can make you feel so good. <sighs> Red submits into her as she says the words, I'm a pervert, I'm a pervert, Red sa says Red in a low tone. Blue grins as she hears it louder, I'm a dirty pervert. At this point, Red doesn't care anymore. All he can think about anymore is how much he wants to feel her. And I, I won't feel like killing myself. Man, the suicide jokes are unreal in this freaking book. Oh... <laughs> uh... How much she wants to get taken by her. Beg for me to let you touch my breasts. Beg like a dog. Do you have a fetish for dogs now? Red can feel her soft breasts on his face. He begins to sweat a bit more. Why was he doing this to himself? It was incredibly degrading, like this book. Yet, he wanted to feel her so bad. He didn't care, nothing mattered th than her. Please let me feel your nice breasts, mm, master. Oh, Jesus, kill me! These last words surprised Blue. She was a bit shocked at how submissive he was to her, how much she had gone to him. She grins as she starts paying st stares at her pet. Good boy, I should reward you for being so well pet. So well, pet? Alright. She unhooks her bra, letting her breast hang. She lowers herself to place her boobs on his hard cock. She flaps them on each side before t <laughs> tip flipping him. Slowly, Red moans as her breasts fill him with the pleasure he had never known. He could feel her soft breath as they wrapped his cock. <sighs> Please, just, just end already. I hate this book. They moved up and down in a unison as her nipples carelessly hit, caressed his tip. I kind of don't care, man. Tell me how perverted you are. She continues to tip flip him. Going faster and faster, he moves her breasts in, less, in a less fluid motion due to speed. Yet, still, 
just as effective. She can feel some they come our tits. Right? I swear, Christ, whoever created this book needs to just like end themselves. This only motivates her to go faster. It's like a dirty pervert that I want to go all of your tits. Oh, stop! He can feel her, himself reaching to the climax, trying to hold it back. And, hmm, let me help you. Then she begins to. Se sensually kiss and lick his penis, sending more pleasure. She plants her lips on his tip while sliding her tongue all over it at this point, but can't hold it in anymore. It feels too good. Uh, I'm gonna. His lips are cut as short as he comes, shooting his hot load all over her mask and tits, a nice creamy layer of covering them. Oh, stop. Oh, you came a lot, didn't you? But takes gasps of air. He lays down. After that, all that, he was exhausted. He was barely able to move it, muscle. Much less move with blue on him. Practically murdering him, but he soon closed his eyes and drifted off to sleep. Blue stared at his body while he closed his eyes, petting his head while holding him. He probably died. I'll let you take a break, after all, you're just a good boy. End my life, Jesus Christ, end this- Red slowly opened his eyes. As he woke up, he felt his blanket covering body, <laughs> covering body and the soft cushions of the couch. He yawned as he looked around. He was on his couch and with his blanket. Okay, TV on. He must have fallen asleep on the- out during the storm. It was all a dream. He looked out of his window and see a dark gray clouds and it's raindrops and po raindrops pouring. <sighs> no, pounding the window. The storm hadn't died down at all. As he adjusted himself, he could feel something holding, holding him down. He just looked and realized he was being held with two arms, as if he were a teddy bear. Okay. But he realized that soft couch he was sitting felt like a little squishy. Okay, it's probably SpongeBob. And that he was sitting on a lap. Okay. Well, he looked up to see Blue watching the TV before she looked down and greeted him cheerfully with a smile. Good morning, sleepyhead. You were knocked out cold at the last night. She leaned her head down, planted a kiss on his cheek. Huh, what happened? You remember last night? We had lots of fun. She chuckled at that remark as if it were a pun. I don't think that would be a pun, but... Oh, wow, we did it! Red asked in a nervous tone. He couldn't imagine him doing with someone, nevertheless a girl, with his type of body or upbeat personality. Of course, silly, she hugged him closer as she rested her breasts on his head. She began to stroke his stomach as she snuggled with him on the couch. Red felt very cozy. He kind of liked the idea of being a, li a live teddy. What the f- even if- Felt, even it felt this nice. Her body was soft and warm, and he liked it when she cuddled with him. How comfy she made him feel. He said something last night that interests me. Huh? What did I say? Did I say something stupid? What happened last night is kind of foggy. She chuckled a bit. Oh no, nothing wrong. It's just you call me master. Red got a bit embarrassed when he heard that and started to blush. I'm not that type of person. I swear, I don't really know his words were cut short as a finger meets his lips. Even though he's wearing a mask, but shushing him. I told you, stop denying yourself. You meant what you said, didn't you? That's alright. She began to dig her hand in his pen. It just does not Wrapping her fingers around his member.
What? Let me be your master. Isn't that what you want? She began to stroke him slowly, making him more and more wrecked while she began to pet his head slowly. She has a petting fetish. Red was once again caught in her grasp of pleasure, yet this time he felt no urge to escape. Oh, uh, moaned Red as he was violated by Blue. He slowly began to feel climax rise. Uh, if you don't stop, I'll come soon. And I'll freaking call the cops for the person who made this book. Go ahead, I give you permission. She began to stroke him faster as his penis twitched in her hands. She then picked Red up and laid him down on her lap. Hey, this feels nice. Blue stared at his eyes as she continued to stroke him. Red in a certain way looked like a child in his current position. Well, I mean, if, if she imagines him as a child, then the FBI is definitely coming for her, but this just seemed to turn Blue on more. She bought, brought her face to Red's and brought him to another deep kiss while he was jerked off. The pleasure was too much as he shies come all over her hand. She released him from her kiss as she was a mess. Good boy. She then laid down face up as began to spread her legs. Yeah. When, when is this book actually going to end? I actually want it to end. It's just so infuriating. Go on. Make me feel good. Red walked to her as he stared down at her body. He hadn't had much of an idea what to do. I'll help you, undress me first. Red went forward and slowly unbuttoned her pants, even though I thought they were wearing a, a tunic, but before sliding them down her legs. I mean, he has short arms, so it's not gonna go that far. As he revealed her exposed lower body, with the white silk panties being the only thing covering her. Take it off. Then we get to the fun part. Red went forward and slowly slid down her panties as they went down her thighs. <laughs> Please end this. I hate it. Ooh, my eyes. There you go. Now come to me. Red slowly walked to her as he positioned himself. He grabbed her hips and gave her a look. Are you sure about this? Blue gave a confirmed nod as finally pre preparing preparing her he inserted himself into her a moan escaped her lips as she was covered she closed her eyes ah he moaned his red thrust deeper and deeper into her taking breaths as he felt her <laughs> freaking kitty cat tighten around his hard pee pee Ma ma messaging it with plus pleasure. Okay, please end it. He thrusted deeper and faster into her, entering the deep areas of her new womb. But it wasn't enough. Blue wanted more, more. She wrapped her legs around his body as she forced him deeper, making him go even farther in her. Red could do nothing but let her body pleasure him as she forced him more and more. Blue allowed Moon to escape her lips as she continued to get more and more aroused. She wanted control. She wanted more. Oh, uh, come here, you. She grabbed Red as he was pulled down into her body. His, br his breasts, uh, okay, he has breasts now, caught in his face. I ain't no red hat breasts now, but it's cool. His face as he caught in a love-making hug. I don't even know what that even means, but he was no longer in control. It was all her. Felt her body as her more pleasure was set up his body, plus the soft, squishy feeling of her breasts on his body made him only submit more. He felt like a climax approaching rather quickly. I'm gonna come again real soon, spoke Red through hasty breaths. He couldn't slow down if he wanted to, plus Blue showed no signs of slowing down at all. We'll do it together, she increased the pace. 
rapidly slamming right into her at such speeds, forcing more pleasure upon him, each thrust bringing them closer and closer to a climax. Oh my god, please stop, stop! Uh, I'm gonna, before Red could finish, we brought Red's face into her, which led to another deep kiss as they both climaxed into each other, their juices what <laughs> intertwined with blue room as her lips left Red's blue let out collective breaths. As she tried to catch her breath along with Red, she stared into Red as he laid on her chest using her breast as a pillow. Okay. He was knocked out cold. She was a bit concerned for him. She probably killed him, mate. Eh? He crit barely had any energy for their lovemaking sessions. You know, I'm about to end this session right now by shooting both of them. She smiled, however, as it would give her more time to train. What, what do you mean train? Him. She found him adorable when he kept slept. How he took l l tiny little breaths of air and as he ne as he breathed. What? She grabbed a blanket and put it over them before cuddling with Red. She curled up with his body using him as sort of teddy bear as she too slept. Okay. Red walked into- oh my, this is still going on, please just end this book, I don't even want to read this anymore, man. Red walked into the house as he carried some groceries. I don't even think he spelled that correctly, but rain poured and poured hard onto him as he closed the door. You know, I bet it's, he's like living in rain town, that's probably why it's always raining. You're home! Did you get the things? Said Blue as she walked up and hugged Red tightly, packing him into her breast, yeah, okay, cause, you know, this book has to just have that each second, you know, after every single paragraph. Red simply blushed a bit, I never got old, oh my gosh, yeah, I got everything, there's a big storm outside, glad I made it, I don't know, good thing you did, or else you would've gotten blown away, <laughs> okay, she's gonna, like, avatar last airbender, just blow him away, out the window for not bringing groceries, okay. She teased Red's side as he took the groceries into the kitchen, placing them in, on the counter. Blue walked behind him as she noticed his, his soaking wet clothes. She grinned as an idea came to mind. You're soaked. You, I should get you changed. Oh, oh no, it's fine. I'll just change it myself. Blue chuckled at him. Red knew what he she wanted and she and what she wanted she got. Don't be silly, let's get you changed. She picked him up and carried him into the bedroom as she placed him on the ground. Here you go on into the closet and get undressed. I'll get you some clothes. Red simply obeyed as he went into the closet and promptly shut the closet door behind him and uh, as he undressed and I'm pretty sure it wouldn't even be space in there but he peeked out of the closet as to see a bit of sight of a sight it was blue fully naked <laughs> Please. as she lay on the bed y'all uh, yeah, I'm about to actually like end this video this is just too much mate it's literally every paragraph is just them doing each other I don't care mate yeah. You must be tired after a long day of working. Red promptly laid in the bed as he soon grabbed and forced into Blue's soft breath as she hugged him. And also, you're not stealing Morgana's role. Morgana's the one who likes bedtime, not you. I guess it's that time again. Yep, time wipe freaking straight further away from humanity. Heh <laughs> heh. Red spoke as he prepared for their daily lovemaking session. This is probably why he has like so many STDs, but she unnaturally milked him dry, just like Atlas with Persona 4. Whenever he was go home, going home rough on him as to increase his endurance and also increasing my will to kill myself. 
on some nights, however, they simply call it naked, because, you know, this person just loves that stuff. Embracing each other, and they're saying, Blue, I love you. I don't. Blue looks down as she planted a kiss on his forehead. I be too red. Come here, you. They snuggled away on the stormy day that rhymed. Much the day they first met. Oh, it's over, finally, yeah. I actually, like, hate this book. Like, this is probably, like, worse than the Kirby X Marks one I read, like, the other day. It's actually so, like, it's just so bad, man. So many spelling errors. It's just, and the whole thing is just straight cancer. Like, no one actually likes Shy Gal, okay? I hate it. And I hate you, my say. Please, just game end yourself. Anyways, yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this beautiful video. It actually took me a really, really long time to make this, because uh, I tried getting some voice clips, like Morgana's voice clips like I played, because I had to make it into a video, because Share Factory is the worst editing software of all time. But yeah, uh, anyways, um, uh, God. I hate fanfiction. So much like fan fiction's like worse than like anything that ever existed. But um yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. You